safer is right now they're launching missiles into Excellent. Russia. Yeah. The, how do you how are you allowed to do that when you're on the way out? Like the people don't want you to be there anymore. This should be like some sort of a, like a pause for like significant actions that could, could potentially start World War Three. Are you kidding me? I mean, just look at what the Biden administration is doing. We're on the brink of World War Three and no one seems to care. North Korea is sending in troops. Russia's ramping up strikes and NATO just confirmed what we all feared. They're gearing up to escalate this conflict even further. And where's Biden? Oh, he's cozying up to Zelensky, striking targets deep within Russia and practically begging for our global conflict before Trump gets into the office to fix this mess. Well, even Joe Rogan is slamming Zelensky and Biden for trying to light this fuse on World War III, and he's right. How much more proof do we need that they're recklessly playing with fire? And this isn't about protecting our borders, guys. It's about escalating chaos. And now Trump, yes, Trump is issuing a shocking emergency warning to wake everyone up before it's too late. Buckle up, guys, because it's getting dangerous real fast. Can you say if you want Ukraine or Russia to win this war? I want everybody to stop dying. They're dying. Russians and Ukrainians. I want them to stop dying. Biden did authorize Ukraine to use those U.S. supplied missiles to strike deeper inside Russia. Now, I just want to clear the air on the rumor that Elon Musk has not changed the like icon to an explosion animation due to World War Three. We're on the escalation between Russia and Ukraine. We're joined on set here by the former CINCOM spokesperson, retired Army Colonel Joe Pacino. Joe, thanks for being here. I suppose you're glad you don't have your old job right now. These are tough times. Let me first let you weigh in on what seems to be clear escalation, whatever you call it. It's a clear escalation here. I think it was an escalation that was not necessary. This didn't really need to happen. I think providing the eight tacums to Ukraine, allowing Ukraine to fire eight tacums uh, into Russia was not necessary. It's a few, they've got a few dozen ATACMs. It's really not enough to strengthen their foothold in Kursk. It's really not enough to change the momentum on the battlefield. And I think in this transition period, it, it's really transition periods are traditionally not a time to make significant changes in these kinds of geopolitical issues. And I think uh, it's, it's a little bit confusing what's happening here. And I think it, it makes all this a little bit uh, less stable than it was. Joe, uh, Joe Rogan and others have pointed out, but Joe Rogan yesterday was talking, saying that this leads to possibly World War III. What's your reaction to that? Yeah, the great uh, foreign policy of Joe Rogan. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, you know, I, I think he's right in this sense. I, I call this a limited global war. What I mean by that is it's limited to one specific part of the earth, limited to one region, right? But you've got global coalitions on either side. On the Russia side, You've got Iran, you've got China supporting Russia, you've got North Korea. Now you've got 11,000 North Korean troops in the fight. Mm -hmm. On the other side, you've got a global coalition around Ukraine, United States, European countries. So you've got a limited global war. Now you've introduced the ATACMs, right? So you're climbing that escalation ladder. You've introduced this new weapon that Russia is firing. You climb the escalation ladder. I'd be afraid of keep climbing that escalation ladder and you trip into a World War III. Trump isn't just sounding the alarm. He's trying to stop a catastrophe that the Biden administration and its NATO allies seem hell bent on igniting, guys. I mean, think about it for a second. While Biden and Zelensky escalate this conflict, targeting Russia's heartland and dragging more nations into the fray, Trump is the only one with the guts to call it out. He knows that this reckless game of geopolitical chicken could spiral into total annihilation. Troops are mobilizing, borders are crumbling, and alliances are fracturing, all while Biden fumbles around pretending that he's got it under control. And let's not forget the hypocrisy, guys. We, there, there's so much more focus on picking fights with North Korea and Russia than protecting our own citizens. Trump's warning isn't just a wake-up call. It's a plea to stop this insanity before it's too late. It's, it's, the whole thing is nuts. I mean, I, look, I don't know shit about politics. Zelensky says Putin is terrified. You fucking people are about to start World War III. Yeah, it's crazy. Russia fired a missile I, today. I, I, I yeah, like they fired an intercontinental ballistic missile for the first time ever. It's the first time one of those has ever been used. Being insanity, because those intercontinental ballistic missiles can have nukes on them. This one didn't, but if it does, the whole world changes 
And it changes because of the military industrial complex and it changes because of the money that's going to Ukraine and it changes because the outgoing president or whoever the fuck is actually running the country has decided to do, some, decided to do something fucking insane. Fucking insane. Watch this surveillance footage showing the exact moment a barrage of missiles struck down of the city of Dnipro this morning. That blast left buildings completely battered, including a medical rehabilitation center. The weapon used in that attack is currently in question. Kyiv says it was an intercontinental ballistic missile, but Western officials, including the U.S., are denying those claims, saying it was a ballistic missile, but not an ICBM. We have never been closer to World War III than we are today. We have never been closer to World War III than we are today under Joe Biden. A global conflict between nuclear armed powers would mean death and destruction on a scale unmatched in human history. It would be nuclear Armageddon. Nothing is more important than avoiding that nightmare. We will avoid it, but we need new leadership. Every day this proxy battle in Ukraine continues, we risk global war. We must be absolutely clear that our objective is to immediately have a total secession of hostilities. All shooting has to stop. This is the central issue. We need peace without delay. In addition, there must also be a complete commitment to dismantling the entire globalist neocon establishment that is perpetually dragging us into endless wars, pretending to fight for freedom and democracy abroad, while they turn us into a third world country and a third world dictatorship right here at home. The State Department, the defense bureaucracy, the intelligence services, and all of the rest need to be completely overhauled and reconstituted to fire the deep staters and put America first. We have to put America first. Finally, we have to finish the process we began under my administration of fundamentally reevaluating NATO's purpose and NATO's mission. Our foreign policy establishment keeps trying to pull the world into conflict with a nuclear-armed Russia based on the lie that Russia represents our greatest threat. But the greatest threat to Western civilization today is not Russia. It's probably, more than anything else, ourselves and some of the horrible USA-hating people that represent us. It's the abolition of our national borders. It's the failure to police our own cities. It's the destruction of the rule of law from within. It's the collapse of the nuclear family and fertility rates like nobody can believe is happening. It's the Marxists who would have us become a godless nation worshiping at the altar of race and gender and environment. And it's the globalist class that has made us totally dependent on China and other foreign countries that basically hate us. These globalists want to squander all of America's strength, blood, and treasure, chasing monsters and phantoms overseas while keeping us distracted from the havoc they're creating right here at home. These forces are doing more damage to America than Russia and China could ever have dreamed. Evicting the sick and corrupt establishment is the monumental task for the next president. And I am the only one who can do it. I'm the only one that can get the job done. I know exactly what has to be done. But it's hard not to read into this decision by the U.S., Vlad, to finally um, approve these long-range weapons for Ukraine as uh, a message being sent uh, not just to U.S. allies, but also to the incoming Trump administration about the importance of continuing to support Ukraine in this fight going forward. Uh, let me also ask you, Nancy, about uh, Secretary Lloyd Austin saying that there is more U.S. money on the way uh, on the way for Ukraine to meet some of their critical battlefield needs. Um, so how much are we talking about? Um, and will that include more weapons? We're talking about $275 million that had already been approved. And yes, it includes a lot of weapons, including drones and rocket launcher ammunition. And we
I'm going to say it before you do. Those missiles look like lightning strikes. Is it just me or were those insanely fast? And so now it looks like we're ramping up to World War III and things have actually gotten worse. The plan seems to be to create chaos before Trump has a chance to fix things. That's what the optics of the Biden administration's decisions have looked like at the moment, with conflict being escalated to new heights as we speak. With President Joe Biden recently approving the use of long-range missiles to strike Russia, the U.S. President Joe Biden has authorized Ukraine to use American long-range missiles to strike targets deep inside Russia. Until now, Mr. Biden has been reluctant to give permission because of concerns about the conflict escalating. Our correspondent David Willis reports now from Washington. The aftermath of the latest missile attack on Ukraine, Russia's largest in months. This, the city of Sumy, near the Russian border, after a missile hit a residential area, killing 10 people and injuring many more. As President Biden arrived in Rio for the G20 summit, reports emerged of new US measures to help Ukraine defend itself. Authorization from the outgoing leader for the use of long-range American-made guided missiles capable of striking deep into Russian territory. Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky seems to be very happy with this green light, saying that such things are not announced. Missiles speak for themselves. I guess he got what he wanted, but it's not like Russia was just going to take this laying down. Hence the first clip where you saw missiles hitting Ukraine like the flash. Now, some of you guys might remember that Vladimir Putin has already spoken about providing Ukraine with long-range missiles that can go into Russian territory, saying that doing so would represent NATO's direct participation in this war. It's also opening up further global conflict conflict as other nations are now being pulled in. News has just come out that a senior North Korean general was injured due to a Ukrainian airstrike aimed at Russia's Kirk region. And just to prove to you how hypocritical this administration is, the White House has condemned Russia's use of North Korean forces, even though it was Ukraine who launched at least 10 missiles into Kursk. Looking at it from a different perspective, it shows that this administration may be putting in the work to stifle peace talks. President-elect Trump has promised to end this Russia-Ukraine war within 24 hours of office. That's going to be very hard to do if the world is at war by that time. Things are also shifting in the borders too, which leads a lot of people to believe that President Joe Biden or whoever is behind the presidency is looking to F things up before January. Watch. I mean, and that's what I'm saying. What is going on as Biden is walking out the door? You know, he, he, he's approving these long range missiles for Ukraine to use within mm -hmm. inside of Russia, something that obviously has sparked Putin uh, to think we're beginning World War Three. He's he's easing restrictions at the border, coming up with this new app that allows migrants to just do it on, you know, do it on, on the phone rather than going in person. And then, you know, this app doesn't, mm -hmm. you know, doesn't even uh, identify whether or not that person has a warrant you know, past crimes. What is this? What is going on in the Biden administration? They're trying to blow the place up as they walk out the door. Yeah. Yeah, they absolutely are trying to blow it up. And it's not Joe Biden. I mean, he hasn't been in charge in quite a while. It's the people around him who are the really yeah. the same people who were in the Obama administration. Good point. Yeah. They're so angry that they're so angry. Trump won the first time they tried to sabotage any foreign policy moves President Trump would make in his first term. Now they're really mad and they're just trying to sabotage President Trump and hoping that he fails. And so then they'll be back in charge. This is now the general consensus within people who are actually seeing what's happening. And I think Joe Rogan covered it well because he just went on a rant as to what's being done just weeks before Trump is set to go back into the White House. Watch. I feel safer knowing that Trump is in office. I do too. I like feel great about it. Like I just like- What I don't feel it. safer is right now they're launching missiles into That's Russia. Yeah. The, how do you how are you allowed to do that when you're on the way out like the people don't want you to be there anymore This should be like some sort of a like a pause for like Significant actions that could c potentially start World War three Maybe that would be a good thing that we would like to avoid from a, a dying former president mm -hmm. It's it's the whole thing is nuts. I mean I, look. I don't know shit about politics. Zelensky says Putin to. is terrified Fuck you man Fuck you people. You fucking people are about to start World War Three. Yeah, it's crazy. Russia fired a missile I, today. I, I, I feel yeah, like they fired an intercontinental ballistic missile yeah. for the first time ever. It's the first time one of those has ever been used. That's insanity. It's fucking insanity because those intercontinental ballistic missiles can have nukes on them. This one didn't. But if it does, the whole world changes 
And it changes because of the military industrial complex, and it changes because of the money that's going to Ukraine, and it changes because the outgoing president or whoever the fuck is actually running the country has decided to do some decided to do something fucking insane. Yeah, fucking right. insane. And I, we're all sitting there watching it and people are cheering it on. CNN was saying, like, finally, see what, what their headline was about Zelensky using, about Biden giving Zelensky the ability to use long range missiles. And it's not just the war that they're trying to escalate here, guys. Reports now show that immigration restrictions are being loosened by the Biden administration. So you got a war that Trump wants to stop and illegal immigration that, again, Trump wants to stomp on. And yet the administration is doing everything in its power to mess up both. It's just crazy to think that this is the level that they've stooped down to. I mean, you heard it a second ago, but just to kind of drive the point home, the Biden deployment Department of Homeland Security is launching an ICE portal app that will let illegal immigrants skip in-person check-ins at an ICE office. Instead, all they got to do is check in with immigration officials via an app on a phone or computer. The app also doesn't check for past arrests or outstanding warrants. That's nice, isn't it? Strong sarcasm there, of course. Sure doesn't sound like the Biden administration is going to make this transition easy for President-elect Trump. And of course, nothing's going to happen because Joe Biden or anybody else around him they're not going to be held to any standards. Do any of you guys think that this counts as treason? Now, on that note, guys, we're seeing pushback on everything that Trump's trying to do. This has led to Matt Gates now pulling back on the AG nomination that was bestowed upon him. Now, I covered this at length in a previous video where blockades are being built up to stop Trump from nominating people that he wants in his cabinet. Make sure you guys check that one out because... The sabotage is evident. As always, guys, appreciate you guys hitting the like button. Thank you for subscribing. Check out this video that's coming up here or check out our playlist and clips down below. I'll see you guys on the next one.